Hello, and welcome to another dating simulator. Um, I've played this one before. I played it the the day it came out. I got, like, one of the bad endings, so today we are going to try and get one of the good endings. And I'm going to try and do this in, like, multiple parts as opposed to one big episode. So that way it's more watchable, I guess. But we're gonna play I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating simulator. It's like a food name. What's a good food name? Clementine. We'll call ourselves Clementine. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School and Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. You need to take this seriously. You better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You burst through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. A good old KFC ad. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. I wish I would, let me just hit enter. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Clementine. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Did she blink? I think she blinked. Actually, I'm... Yeah, okay, she blinked. Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay. A lot nervous. What the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, and well, I, when I ate it, I, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since when we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, it became clear to me that you're the most loving, loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. But with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, famous three-day only semester. <coughs> What's the matter, bud? What's the matter? I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam has a, Miriam has had has always had a flair for the dramatics. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Let's let's give her a pep talk. Remember last month when we saw a fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares. I've been trying to forget. I know she looks looked spooky, but she was so sweet, and you told her that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy-looking tower and the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating, you'll be delighted in the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk with Miriam, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? You de can definitely believe it. I, uh, I, I cannot believe it. 
Before you can get another word out, you rudely, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hand and onto the ground. Hey! It's, it's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. She looks like she could be a part of Team Rocket if she really wanted to be. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Clementine's shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she decided to add extra letters to make her feel feel better than everybody else. You gotta, you gotta make yourself feel special somehow. If anyone here knows what a perfect shins look like, it's us. I'm not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem. <laughs> Van Van! You rang rang. It looks like he belongs in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> You've never been sure of what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have just been as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would allow people like you to attend as students. His... his hair is a star. I never noticed that before. I know, right? You'd think that they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as professors? You amateurs could learn a lot from us. Um, I was trying to see if there's like a pattern in their blinking, but there isn't. Or at least not one I can pick up at the moment. But the first day of school is about to start. There's not, there's just not enough time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Uh, oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! I think you mean thank you? My name's Pop. I was named after my Pop-Pop. He's old. Did someone like this also be a student at school. He must be one heck of a chef. Also his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi Pop, I'm Clementine, so are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope! And with that the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? I, I guess. It's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scrappy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute puppy and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UC... S-L-A-L. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Oof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up on the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you and swirl of cherry blossom, cherry blossom petals fills the air inside the classroom. Somebody must have left the window open. <laughs> I guess that's the joke. I'm chilly. Somebody closed the window. And then he walks in. You immediately get swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkably and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkle. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he could finish his sentence. 
please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hush of murmurs rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle de desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everybody is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And over there must be sweaty sweats a lot. You're so creative, Ashley. <laughs> Maybe we should open the window back up and before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You both know my name. We're, we were in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with you all... With all your really weird insults? Besides, when Clementine sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Thanks, Miriam. Take a moment to clean yourself off. It's a good thing you did not forget about the deodorant thing this morning. The classroom is hot, hot, hot. Professor Dog steps into a to settle the class down and sets up some ground rules. Welcome to University Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, and there might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and complete the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor rousing professor's rousing speech. Is this the robot? Oh, it's this guy. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! <laughs> late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue. You're on the fast track. Out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right class? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students with that tardiness is unacceptable. I think Colonel Sanders would come in late. But it's okay, because he, he had cherry blossoms when he came in. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. He turned to see his student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of ind industrial ch kitchen appliance. Bzzz, brrr. Class burst into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks into the classroom as ev as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he sniffs his he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. <laughs> you better start taking care of yourself. <laughs> You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? A chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks into it. His favorite. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick with coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you je jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Clementine, there's a seat here. It seems no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. I'm going to sit by the best friend. Two good options, but what will you choose? I'm going to choose by sit by my best friend. 
You moved to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality, and there's a seat open right next to him. If he had a sit had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. Well, shucks. I never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say. But now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pop quiz! Yay! A pop quiz! A quiz about me! This is incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz. They'll tell me if you are ready for a life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If A is traveling to the point B and train is traveling to the point, point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. That's right. Forest is to a tree as chicken is to a slam dunk feather. That's right. What is the most effective, efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. A camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. That's right. It sprinkles a good boy. He's a talking dog that teaches at a culinary school. He is the best boy. That's right. Your total score is 5 out of 5. Wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh, thanks. Hot diggity Clementine, you scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students, as an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is nice as any restaurant you have eaten at. It makes sense that the school is dedicated to cooking, though it also be serious about eating. The Stewart Cafeteria. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tinkle and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. It's chicken. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is this about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was oh howdy folks, I'd like to make an announcement. Aw, oh, poor student. Hey, I was it's about lunchtime. Everyone cheers. But I shh Lunch, lunch, lunch. Shh. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Aha. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food that this mysterious student has created. You heard that he is very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a bucket above his head and contains glimmer... It, the contents glimmer in the light. Pile high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded, fried into a crispy golden finish. They are just... The aroma envelopes you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with ch chicken. What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to gurgle, as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. But my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every student has a pen and paper and is scribbling down notes as fast as they can. That's all to say, uh, that's all I ha I'll say about that. What do you think? We want your stupid secret recipe, dude. Psh, uh, nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. Got you. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs>
Oh. <laughs> oh. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. You wait to see what Ashley, what zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelt something beautiful, and I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, why don't you... If you don't want any... I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in pure exhilaration, act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. Sorry. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of the bucket and sink in your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transport you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping on a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. We are going to try and identify every flavor. You let the food rest in your mouth. Focus on and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper, too obvious. Oregano, basil, maybe, but there's something else. Something dark and even spicy, you dig deeper and deeper. Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be blank? He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use blank. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but even this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by lunch. No one noticed that you travel through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Col Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops at what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I was wondering if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make my fortune, establish my legacy for all time, as I open a change of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I will be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two whole days to get to know each other. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel's looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient that you can't tell. I use blank. Something my great-grandmother taught. Blank! Wow! You never would have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you sure searched it. And blank definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now, two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While well, you wrapped up in a huge revelation that you, that you notice that Colonel has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. And I think about how my story will continue on after I graduate. Sounds like you have big plans. 
I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world, and you can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Thank him to show your own strength, or wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Hmm. Hmm. Let's wow him with a big idea. Let's wow him with a big idea. You know, about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It's a wonderful way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? Heard of them? I, ha, I tend to an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Habanero, pableno, cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe. Into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improve on my recipes, Clementine. I'm heading back to class for the next lesson. That certainly didn't go as planned. I should have negged him. You better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step into a massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven, all the tools and ingredients they can need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! We finally get to show our stuff! Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff! What if I, I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow it, blow anything, except maybe a kiss to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena! For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team for two, that is me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Clementine, I prepare our station. Without you as partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep, beep, bzzz. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick few for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you'll have to pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I'm going to ask Clank. Sorry, Papa, I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. Not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school it even is at this junction. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank may, might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzzt. Tissues? I hardly know you. Aha! Clank jutters and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. It's always something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, and comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quick, quickly turn away. I almost said quirky. A 
I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. I was use Ashley voice. Sanders heart Sanders heart is my business. And you better keep your fingers off my man. Then why aren't you his partner? Did someone call for me? Ah, oh, no, jeez, Van Van. I'm over here crushing Clementine's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns with an armful of peeled potato. He peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley and Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duo duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Clementine was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to cut cr creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite the spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might be a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can cast complimentary shadows we fit together like thigh and a drumstick? Just makes it just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel. If you don't watch out. Ashley's really going hard going at you. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn a colonel, hunk of hunt in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever best friend who always has your back. Okay. Oh, jeez. Should we go to Miriam? Or should we go to Colonel Sanders? Let's go to Miriam. You turn to Miriam as soon as you find her. She says that senses it and looks back. This is girl's friend and need radars. Second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my best friend? I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust with some this. My skills as chef perhaps stepping away from this competition. You are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Clementine is my partner for today's activity. You look at for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy sat stature. You look down at your station and realize the tension of the moment. Your hands were being have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've crushed the boiled potatoes in a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor as if it is your natural natural passion guided through your the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere I know just what to do Colonel Sanders extends his hand he's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes, resulting in look spectacular. Granny would be, would have been so proud. Colonel Sanders holds his fork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he, he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand there holding the same spork, and for that small amount of time, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Her eyes lock. The moment is electric. <laughs> time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you 
dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage and without asking, without thinking, you fill the fling the sparkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on there, Clementine. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. And I has potato face. Van Van rushes back over and cover a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my spectacularly braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe and forged from my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. This ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look upon with envy. And it looks horrible, and it tastes horrible, doesn't it? Interrupting the, the interrupting student rushes at Van Van, swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. Something is about that dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and made of turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. You killed him! <laughs> Everyone step back and don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle has been slurped into Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain just for a moment, then almost immediately back into his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd as they are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It appears Pop, that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poison of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Uh, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you've shaken up that you're shaken up by the really annoying student and all his nonsense. Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. So, we're just gonna pretend that it's not a completely different day. As I'm filming this. Alright. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and a little more spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad. The quad's neon glow, speaking softly. The smashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I just want you to know they're not as a great representation of my skill. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food at the, to begin with. Colonel Sanders, getting choked up, cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now it might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders. Yes, Clementine. There's something I need to tell you. Hold on right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, 
When I was a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I... you... shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. I mean, he does have a star on his head. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw that you killed that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, me, me. I'm the hero. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. I, uh, I think I left the fridge open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me, just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I am a monster, you see. Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? Before you can discuss the syntax any further, is a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack. You decide to go on to the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Does one damage. Just got real. The attack really upsets Spork Monster. Spark monster is going goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spark monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take any more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buff up. Don't control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and quite frankly a little gassy. You better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spark monster is oozing cheese sauce onto one of the quad. I wonder who, who's going to have to clean that up. If you're feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for the ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. File Villain, your reign of terror stops here. Oh. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Popeye Power Pinch. Popeye Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spark Monster is defeated. You saved me. Injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You manage to temper down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast. Don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spark monster scutters off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be a appears at first to be a cookbook. 
and upon closer inspection, has so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name seems to be signed out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding a mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize your final attack has left you completed depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Unless I helped you get home in your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it work. without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dreams, you are together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> Alright, and that is where we will be ending part one. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it's not too long. And is that not BTS on the wall there? You're like one member short. But I'm telling you. It looks like it looks like a K-pop group of sorts. Doesn't necessarily have to be BTS, but anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Katie Ross signing off. Boop.